Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our Tuesday morning series on the kingdom of God. It is great to be with you as always. Today, I want to share on the topic of do not shut the doors of the kingdom. And we're going to look at two specific passages, one from the Gospel of Matthew and one from the Gospel of Mark. I thought it would be uh, helpful as an illustration to stand in front of these open doors, uh, looking out on Marsh Street and the world that surrounds our church as a reminder to us uh, of Jesus' call that we are to be a church of open doors to those who don't know Jesus. And then, in fact, Jesus challenges us, I think, in these texts and others to do whatever it takes to connect others to him. And that means looking at the ways in which sometimes we as individuals or we as a church might close the doors, whether it's willfully or unintentionally, uh, to those who do not yet know Jesus. Some years ago, a teacher of mine shared a story that I find helpful in today's reflection. He was talking about cattle ranching, and he contrasted cattle ranching in the United States with cattle ranching in the Australian outback. In his illustration, he described how cattle ranchers in the United States and places like Texas will often build fences around their ranch as a way to keep their herd contained within their property. But then he went on to describe how cattle ranching in the Australian outback is a, a different game altogether. The Australian outback is so vast and so massive uh, that trying to build fences to contain a herd of cattle is almost a, a ridiculous idea. And so instead, one of the methods that cattle ranchers in the Australian outback employ is to dig wells as places where the cattle gather because they need water to stay alive. And if they drift too far away from this source of life, they'll wither and die. And so the cattle actually stay close by to the wells because they need it for sustenance. It's a great illustration that I'll reflect on in just a moment of how we at times may shut the doors to the kingdom uh, to those who do not yet know Jesus when we're called to simply be those who represent the life-giving power and presence of Jesus in the world around us. But let me share today's passages with you. The first is from Matthew 23. And in this passage, Jesus speaks some powerful words of, of challenge and critique uh, to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. He begins in verse 8 saying, Don't let anyone call you rabbi, for you have only one teacher, and all of you are equal as brothers and sisters. And don't address anyone here on earth as father, for only God in heaven is your father. And don't let anyone call you teacher, for you have only one teacher, the Messiah. The greatest among you must be a servant, but those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. And then Jesus presses in and, and he says, What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law and you Pharisees? Hypocrites, he shouts, for you shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. He continues, you won't go in yourselves and you don't let others enter either. And we see in this passage how Jesus is furious uh, with the customs and traditions that are, are such a prevalent part of the way the religious leaders and Pharisees are expressing their faith. And, and Jesus is reflecting here on, on how those traditions and those practices have actually become an obstacle uh, for others, uh, preventing them from truly coming to know the God of Israel. You know, the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The, the Son of Man, Jesus, came to bring the lost back to their heavenly Father. And so it's no surprise that Jesus becomes furious in moments when he sees those who are in positions of power and influence preventing people from making that journey back to God. In our second text for today, Mark 10, verses 13 through 16, we have a, a very different situation, but at the heart of it is a similar problem. And in this instance, Jesus' anger is directed toward his disciples, who, like the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, misunderstood what he was truly about and why he had come. Beginning in verse 13 of Mark 10, Mark tells us, One day some parents brought their children to Jesus so he could touch and bless them. But the disciples scolded the parents for bothering him. When Jesus saw what was happening, he was angry with his disciples. 
Some translations translate that as they, he was indignant with his disciples. One of the few instances in the Gospels where we see this level of anger in Jesus. He said to them, let the children come to me. Don't stop them. For the kingdom of God belongs to those who are like these children. I tell you the truth. Anyone who doesn't receive the kingdom of God like a child will never enter it. Then he took the children in his arms and placed his hands on their heads and he blessed them. In both of these stories and in other accounts, that which angers Jesus to the utmost is when people like his disciples or the Pharisees or like you and me get in the way of others encountering Jesus. These passages challenge us. They challenge us to reflect on on our lives and our practices and our customs and our our language and our Christian culture and to consider the ways that we might be shutting the doors of the kingdom in the faces of others. And none of us, myself included, like to hear statements of critique, but we need to hear these words from Jesus. Another story that comes to mind is the familiar story of Jesus clearing the temple courts. And there are so many different ways that we can reflect on what was happening in that scene. And one of the ways that we see Jesus working is alike the ways we see him in these two passages. Jesus is furious with with the money changers and those who are selling the sacrifices in the temple courts because their actions are precluding people from coming to the place to worship God and to connect with God. And so he in a rage, flips over these tables and drives out the money changers because their actions are prohibiting others from drawing close to God. You see, the temple was the place where the people of God believed that heaven and earth intersected. It was the place that people would come from from far off places to worship God, to connect with God. We learn in the New Testament that through the work, through the ministry of Jesus, that we are now the temple of God, that we are now in Christ, the place where heaven and earth connect, and that our lives are to be open and the doors are to be open for those who do not know Jesus to come and to to meet him through our lives. So through today's text, we're being asked some very critical questions about our purpose as disciples of Jesus and our purpose as the church of Jesus. We're being asked to reflect on the ways in which we may have willfully or unintentionally shut the doors of the kingdom of God in the faces of others. And I know that's a hard question to hear. It's a sobering question for me to ask myself, but it's a critical question if we're serious about participating in the mission of Jesus that he's called us to. What are the ways that we've shut the doors to the kingdom? Is there a culture that we've embraced and a set of traditions and practices that are so deeply ingrained within us that we're unable to even see the way in which these customs and practices are making it difficult for others to encounter Jesus through our lives and the life of our church? And are there things that God is asking us to shed individually and collectively, so that we might open wide the doors of the kingdom and so that all may be welcome to come in and to meet Jesus face to face. I pray that we'll take the time to consider these passages. I pray that we'll take the the time and have the courage to see ourselves in these passages, to see our church in these passages and to allow the Holy Spirit to be the one who guides and defines for us the culture of the kingdom that we need to embrace for the world of today. And may we have the humility to receive. Again, in Matthew 23, verse 12, Jesus says, Those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. May we humble ourselves May we be the church of the open doors 
May we be the followers of Jesus whose lives are open and transparent before the world around us so that they may see the goodness of God on display in our lives. And may our humility and the power of Jesus at work within us bear much fruit. And may the kingdom of God continue to grow through our lives in him. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Derek from First Church in Wethersfield. And we at the church want to thank you for tuning in to this video. We hope you were encouraged. If you'd like to see more videos like this, just follow the links below. Or you can go to our YouTube channel, First Church Wethersfield. Or if you'd like more information about the church, visit our website at firstchurch.org. Again, thanks for tuning in, and may God bless you.